Thessalonians uh, 5.11 It says, Therefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Now you know it doesn't say for the personality's sake, for your pastor's uh, dress sake. You know, we don't care what he looks like, but his work's sake. And we know that he's put in a lot of work here for over 30 years. So we, we really have to, uh, you know, we have to admonish and thank him for that. But now our, our study today, I, I'm mentioning this because this is going to be a, a part of our study. We'll get to it later on. But we have two main verses that we're going to just focus on and a few in between. Uh, I want you to turn to um, Romans. Turn to Romans 8, 14. Romans 8.14 Romans 8.14 Our study is how to be led by the Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And if you go down to verse 16, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if the children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Now, if you can turn to Proverbs. Proverbs twenty twenty seven. Proverbs twenty twenty seven. Proverbs Proverbs twenty twenty seven. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward parts. No, there's another translation that says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching the inward parts or the, um, the inward parts of the belly. Now, what I want you to see here is, you know, back then, you know, they didn't have uh, lights. They had candles. What we see here that they have lamps. Well, if we bring that up to the modern times, you would say the spirit of man is the lights of the Lord. He uses, and here's another translation. Let me say it right here. He said, it says that, um, he said, the spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring that we are children of God. And it says that uh, the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward parts. So what he's saying is that is that the spirit, along with your spirit, will enlighten you. You know, the Bible says that we that God is the spirit; we are a spirit. We're one spirit with the Lord. 
And the Holy Spirit beareth witness with our spirit. So, you know, I want to, you know, I, I wonder because, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of Christians in the church today that, you know, they don't, I tried to figure out why they can't understand Paul's gospel, the mystery. And, you know, I, I got to thinking, and I, I was looking at this verse, and it says, The Spirit of man is the count of the Lord. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of people, they try, to, uh, they try to find God, or they try to, they're being led by their flesh. They're being led by their soul. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Word doesn't say that. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that your flesh is the candle of the Lord. It doesn't say your soul is the candle of the Lord. It says your spirit is the candle of the Lord. And you know, to really understand this, you got to you have to understand man, the mystery of man. What is what is man? First uh, Thessalonians five seventeen. It says that. I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. And Did you say 1 Thessalonians 5? 2 Thessalonians. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my mistake. But, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of pastors, they, uh, they, they quote this verse backwards. You know, why, do, why don't they say it like the Bible says they say body, soul, spirit. But see, Paul starts with the inward man and works his way out. Spirit, soul, and body. So, there's no way that you can actually know anything about the spirit in your flesh or in your soul. So, this um, how could I? I'm gonna I'm gonna start with what? Uh, let me just ask you a question. Are you? Do you have a human? Does anybody in here have a human? No, you don't have a human. You are a human. You're a human being. That physical man, along with that soul, that's the human being of man. That's the part of man that operates and lives in the earth. With his soul, he has his mind, will, and emotions. And to operate within this earth, he has his senses. You know, he has his five senses that he can touch, feel, taste, and get around. You know, that's a physical man. But then there's another part of man. The spiritual man. The spiritual man is the eternal man. He's eternal. He doesn't die. You see, the, the body will die. Uh, now, it's hard to understand spirit, soul, body. Because you hear a lot of, I even heard pastors use that soul and spirit interchangeably. They say it's one and the same. But you can see that it's, it's not one and the same. Paul says spirit, soul, and body. Even in the Greek and the Hebrew, they're not, this, they're not the same word. They're not the same. So we have to peer in here and see the workings of because if you don't watch out, that soul, that soul man, he was created in God's image. In the garden, it says that we were created in his image. What was created in his image? Man, the human being. We were already spirits. But when he created the man, he became a human being. So we have spirit, soul, and body. We can live in three worlds of existence simultaneously. We can live in the world 
of the Spirit where we contact God our Father. Or we can live in the world of the soul, which is our mind, will, and, and emotions. We can contact the intellectual realm. And with our body, we can contact the physical world. Now, if you don't watch out, that soul and that spirit, they're both created in the image of God. And if you don't watch out, you'll get them confused because they pretty much operate the same way. They operate the same way. So we're going we're gonna to break it apart and see if we can find that body. We're going to find that soul, man, and we're going to find that spirit, man. Um, I'm going to begin with the soul. You know, the soul, man, pretty much operates the physical body. Now, if I was, say, I'm, say, uh, Thornton's, say Thornton, let's use Thornton. Thornton's, Thornton's driving down the street in his truck. I don't say, here come the truck, and it's got Thornton in it. No, I say, here come Thornton in his truck. I put the man first. I don't, I don't put the body first. You know, that's, that's what we seem to do. You know, the headlights of that car is not Thornton's eyes. <laughs> you know, they, they might be the assistance to his eyes, but they're, they're not his eyes. <laughs> you, know, we, you know, we we I don't know why we put things backwards like that. But what we do is we miss out on everything that the Holy Spirit is trying to teach us because we're not in the Spirit. You see, we're not in the Spirit. We're using our mind to find God. You, you won't find Him. You won't find Him. But um, I wanted to turn to um, 2 Corinthians 4.16. 2 Corinthians 4.16. Four sixteen, and if you can just hold your position right there, um, four sixteen. Um, 416, 416. It says 416. Well, I'm in 2 Corinthians 416. Let me get this right here. I don't want to. 2 Corinthians 4.16 Yes, mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 4.16 Is that 4.16? Yeah. Yes, sir. It says, for, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day you see that outward man is not you that's your body that inward man is the real you and we see where that, this outward man perish but we see that this inward man is renewed day by day yes. that spirit man gets, gets younger all the time now if you go let's go to uh, Peter let's go to 1 Peter 3, 4. Now in 1 Peter 3, 4, he says, Let it be the hidden man of the heart. That hidden man 
of the heart. He's putting in, he's saying the same thing, but he's putting it another way. He's calling that spirit man the hidden man of the heart. You can probably understand this a lot better if you would say the hidden man of the spirit. Now, if let's turn to First Corinthians fourteen fourteen. First Corinthians. <clears throat> now here, right here is uh, this is tricky, right here. Paul, right here, is talking about he's talking about tongues, but we know that tongues don't exist. We know that prophecy prophecy doesn't exist. But there's there's something in here that is going to reveal the soul, man. It says. For if I pray in a in an unknown unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. See, now we know that understanding is of the mind. That's that's the soul right there. There's a soul. He said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding, my mind. Is unfruitful. Now, if we turn to Second Corinthians five seventeen, Second Corinthians five seventeen. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now tell me this: Do you have a new body? You got the same old body. Same old body. Same old body. You got the same old body. This new creation is the, the new man, the new spirit man. The new spirit man, that's, that's the new creation. Now we have, to, we have to understand this because, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, that, that new creation, you know, they, they're looking at their body. They're saying that their body is a new creation. No, that's not your body. This 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 is a this is spiritual. It says any man that is in Christ is a new creation. If you're in Christ, that's spiritual. We're spiritually in Christ. We're in, we're in Christ. Uh, don't don't mistake that for the for the body. Um, but Paul goes on to say that. He was in Corinthians, and he was speaking to them, and he says um, that he would rather depart and be with Christ. Now, what does he mean by that? He said, I would rather depart and be with Christ. See, the body doesn't depart. The body stays here. It goes to the grave. See, that, that's, that's a, there's the spirit man right there. That's that's the real you. That's the real you. Now we want. To, I want to just show you all this, so that we can really see how to be led by the Spirit. Because He didn't say that He was going to lead us by our flesh. He said He was going to lead us by our, our Spirit. Now a lot of Christians, we're in Christ and we believe we have a lot of faith. But we're carnal minded. You know, we're carnal minded. You know, you'll you'll never you'll never understand Christ. 
<laughs> Romans 8 says, Therefore the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. And that we have to know this because he didn't say that the Holy Spirit will teach your body. It didn't say the Holy Spirit would teach your flesh. He said it would teach your spirit. He will work right alongside and bear witness with your spirit. You know, what is true. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't deal with the body. That's you. You deal with the body. You get your body in line. You tell your body what to do. The Holy Spirit's concerned with your spirit. And if you get in line with that Holy Spirit, it's going to straighten your spirit up. And in turn, your spirit is going to straighten your body up. It's going to straighten your body up. Um, now when I first started this you know I, 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 I kind of went through a process of elimination I got a piece of paper and I, I wrote it down and I said well here's my here's my body right here now I, I know I contact the, the physical world I said, now here's my spirit. I, I contact the spiritual realm. But my soul, my soul, where's my soul? I, I can't find my soul. <laughs> you know? So, as we've seen in, in, in 2 Corinthians, where he says, he's talking about tongues. He says, if I pray in, a, in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth but my understanding is unfruitful there's my mind right there there's my soul right there it's, it's unfruitful there's there's a spirit soul and body of the man uh, Someone's ready to close. So you can see that God He wants to He wants to work through the through the outer man. Or rather through the inner man. He wants you to, to take care of your body. He doesn't want you to lead. He doesn't want you to take the lead. If you can picture a a, a guard dog. You know, he's, he's leading the blind man. He's leading them. You see? He's trusting in that dog that that dog can lead him. The dog's not in back of him. The dog's in, in front of him. You know, there's an old story about there was a man, he was on a trail and he was walking down and he's got the Lord behind him and he says, Lord, you know, it's kind of dark out here. I can't, I can't see too good. The, uh, do you, got, you got my back? The man didn't say anything. So he walks a little bit further and he says, Lord, uh, I can't see anything. You, you got my back. The Lord didn't say anything. He's walking some more and all of a sudden, boom, he falls. He's falling and rolling and he's rolling. He comes to a stop. He looks up the hill and says, Hey, Lord, I thought you had my back. He says, Well, if you let me lead, let me lead. Let me do the lead. You see? He's leading himself. You know, <laughs> you have to let the, the word tell you what to do. You got to get into the word. You got to get into the word. Um, it says in Proverbs, lean not into your own understanding. You know, it says, lean not into your own understanding. It also says that um, man does not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's the word. It's all it's all about the word. Anything that we learn or anything that we have to do to assist in our lives right now, it's all in the word. 
The word is complete. All we got to do is get on it. It's not going to fall. If we stand on that Bible, in order for us to fall, the Bible got to go down. We know His Word stands forever. It's not going anywhere. But you can see the mind. You can see the mind of the flesh is pretty much just is, is sense and reasoning. And we know that man's reasoning senses. It says that man's wisdom is foolishness with God. It's foolishness. It only, it only makes sense to, to see what God got to say about it. You won't have a problem. If you just learn what God has to say about it and follow that, you won't, you won't have a problem. But we have a tendency because we're physical beings. You know, we're, we're operating you know, you know, with our senses. You know, we want to do everything the world way. The world way. And then when we mess up, then we want to run back to the Bible way. You know, it, it doesn't, it just, it's just not the right way to do it. But it, it's, he also says um, in Second Corinthians, he says, Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He's, he's saying, he's going to present you, your whole being, your whole body, your whole spirit, blameless. You're blameless in your body, you're blameless in your soul, and you're blameless in your spirit until the coming of the Lord. And faithful is he that will do it. He will do it. He will do it. So, I'm going to make this short. It's not a really long study. But the Bible doesn't say that the prophets are the candle of the Lord. He doesn't say that the apostles were the candle of the Lord. He didn't say that even the pastor was the candle of the Lord. He said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It's you, you see. He's going to use your spirit and enlighten you with the word, his light. That's, uh, that's pretty much God's way. And if you do it any other way, you know, it, it makes sense sometimes. You know, man, you know, he has some sense. <laughs> he has some sense, but we can see by what's going on right now with all the politics and all the stuff that's going on. It's very, very getting very, very seriously confusing. Man is confused. And if you're not walking in the Spirit of God, you know, you got to understand, we can get to this study later on at another time, but in that Suki world, that soul world, that Satan's world, he operates in that world. He don't have no authority in the Spirit. That's why we get into the Spirit so he doesn't attack. He can't touch us in the spirit. But once we get in that suke world, that soul realm, that's his world. And he says that he'll imitate God. He says he'll be like the most high. You know? You, you ever uh, see somebody that looks like someone and you say, Hey, I know, you look just like so-and-so. You say, just hold up a minute. He'll, he'll be right in here for a minute. I want to put you guys together. You guys look just like each other. And then when he walks in, you say... Oh, wait a minute, he don't. You guys don't look like each other at all. See, that's Satan. See, that's Satan. Satan says that he will imitate God and, and be like the Most High. And see, if you don't know what the real thing is, Satan will trick you. And he'll give you the wrong thing. You see, that's why it's so important that we stay in the Spirit, stay in the Word, walk in the Word. Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna just close right there. I really don't have much to say about that, but I I, I hope that that we can that you can just see if you can just get outside this body, just like a man in a an astronaut in a in a suit. That that astronaut that suit is not him. 
that suit is just the cover for him to operate in that realm that he's in. If that man was to get out of that suit, you see him. You see who that man is. That's the same way with us. Our body is not us. We're, we're spiritual beings. But because God created us to live and to operate in this earth, He's given it to us. You know, we're, we're, we're physical beings, we're mental beings, and we're spiritual beings. All in one. No other creature has that ability. Um, can you turn to uh, I'm going to close here can you turn to uh, Psalms 23 we know what that is Psalms 23 Proverbs Psalms 23 it says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And I want you to hear and see this. He says, He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me. And if you go down to verse 3, it says, He restoreth my soul. There it is again. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. For His name. What His name means. What it stands for. For His name. He says, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to lead you. Now, uh, let's turn to uh, uh, I think it's Proverbs. Let me get this, make this correct in here. Let's turn to, let's turn to Psalms 138 2. Psalms 138.2 I just want you to see something here He's talking about his name's sake Psalms 138.2 He says I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth Look at this right here It says For thou hast magnified Thy word above all thy name. See, this his word for his name's sake. He put his word even above his name. You see, above his name. It's, 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 it's all his word. And we really need to know that. We, I mean, we have the complete will of God, the complete ways of God, and how to live. In this earth, with His Word. With His Word. And once again, the prophet's not the candle of the Lord. <laughs> Even Pastor Kurth, he's not the candle of the Lord. Just you are the candle of the Lord. God will guide you and lead you and enlighten you through your spirit. Your light. You're the candle of the Lord. God uses you. Amen. Amen.